Ancient Egyptians were no doubt pioneers of a tremendous and startling number of inventions that are still relevant to us to this day. They were gifted with conceptualizing great inventions in their minds and bringing them into reality with their hands. The pyramids, which are the most talked about innovation of ancient Egypt still standing today, serve as a testament to how sound they were architecturally. They put much effort into the construction of those pyramids because it was where the pharaohs of Egypt were buried as they believed treasures were needed to be buried alongside the pharaoh so he would use them in the afterlife. Besides this major feat accomplished by ancient Egyptians, research has also shown that other inventions like paper and ink, writing, math, the earliest uses of wigs and makeup, medicines, furniture, calendar, toothpaste, perfume, and many more can be linked to ancient Egypt. Thus, it can be said that their civilization had a significant effect on the way people today dress, eat, communicate, travel, and so on. But who were ancient Egyptians? What did they look like? Were they black or were they white? Let's find out. Ancient Egypt lasted from 3100 BC when Namir reigned as Egypt's first king and ended in 30 BC when under Cleopatra and her son and co-ruler Caesarion, it fell to the Roman Empire and thus became a Roman province. The ancient Egyptian Empire began to experience a decline in about 700 BC. It was dominated by several other civilizations. The first to conquer Egypt was the Assyrian Empire. The Persian Empire followed suit about a hundred years later. Subsequently, Alexander the Great of Greece in 332 BC conquered Egypt and set up his dynasty, which was known as the Ptolemaic dynasty. Finally, the Romans came in 30 BC and reduced the once powerful Egypt to a mere province of Rome. The civilization has been attached to solid relations with other territories bringing in and exporting goods, food, tradition, religion, people and goals. At different points in time, ancient Egypt dominated and ruled surrounding regions outside the modern-day country's border, today known as Sudan, Cyprus, Lebanon, Syria, Israel and Palestine. There has been a long-standing controversy as to the ethnicity of the Asian peoples of the Nile Valley, Egypt. The lingering question is whether they were black or white. Some have argued for the former, while others the latter. A few others remain neutral, opining that it was neither black nor white. Egypt was conquered a number of times by Alexander the Great, the Greeks, Romans, Arabs and more. Did these invasions have any major effect on their genetics? As far back as the 19th century, the Americans and Europeans have the record for being the first to disagree with the ethnic background of the ancient Egyptians in their works. A classic example of such can be seen in an October 1833 article published in the New England magazine where the writers oppose a claim celebrating Herodotus as a benchmark for their being Negroes. The UNESCO in 1974 organized a symposium in Cairo on the peopling of ancient Egypt and deciphering of the Meriotic script. The black theory was faced with profound dissent by scholars. In a like manner, none of the attendees lent their voices supporting an earlier hypothesis that Egyptians were white, with a dark or even black pigmentation. The conclusion drawn by most participants at the UNESCO conference of 1974 was that the people of ancient Egypt were indigenous to the Nile Valley and comprised of people from north and south of the Sahara who were distinguished by their color. 
It would seem that Hollywood has also taken a position upholding the origin of the Egyptians to be white. This is evidenced by the domination of whites in their castings for movies based on ancient Egypt. Perhaps one of the strongest proofs in favor of African descent of Egyptian civilization stems from the fact that Egyptians themselves called their land Kamit, translating to the Black Land, whilst their name for themselves was Kamu, which means the Blacks. Furthermore, they used the phrase Kenti or Kentu to refer to the lands to the south of them, which were generally inhabited by the Sudanic peoples. In the 1800s, a French philosopher, Constantin Francois de Chasboeuf, Comte de Vaugny, wrote about the Egyptian race disputation. He wrote that the Copts were the proper representatives of the ancient Egyptians due to their jaundice and fumed skin, which is neither Greek, Negro, nor Arab. The Chasboeuf said their full faces, their puffy eyes, their crushed noses, and their thick lips showed that the ancient Egyptians were true Negroes of the same type as all native-born Africans. Also, we can decipher from Egyptian art that the people were portrayed with reddish, olive or yellow skin tones. Even the Great Sphinx of Giza, commonly referred to as the Sphinx, has been described as having Nubian or Sub-Saharan attributes, and literary works from Greek writers like Herodotus and Aristotle refer to Egyptians as having dark skin. Many Western scholars, specifically in the early 2000s, could not bring themselves to accept that black people could have created such a great civilization. To this day, they perpetuate and give room to the racist proposition that only white people could ever and ever will be capable of such architectural attainment. Conventional scholars reject the idea that ancient Egyptians were either black or white. They stress that applying current notions of black or white races to ancient Egypt is anachronistic. Proponents of this school of thought believe that enough evidence has not been yet gathered to make a precise judgment about the complexion of the ancient Egyptians. While it is true that bodies have been exhumed and researched on, Mummies are too desiccated to show appropriate skin tone, and the little amount of genetic evidence they have birthed thus far does not do much to answer the question at hand. They have been heard to say that minor alterations in bone structure do not accurately reveal the race of a recently deceased human, how much more a 3,000-year-old corpse. Genetic testing on ancient Egyptians has been met with a lot of difficulties. But DNA tests on present-day Egyptians reveal that their genes are similar to that of the people from the rest of the Middle East and interposed between peoples from Southern Europe and Sub-Saharan Africa. Contemporary Egyptians, however, ethnically identify themselves as Arabs. Ancient Egyptians were ethnically and racially diverse. The reason being that the Nile River within their vicinity attracted people from all over. None of the old Egyptian writings from that period suggest that the people were engrossed with skin color or placed much focus on it. Those who simply obeyed the king followed laid down rules, conversed in the language, and worshipped the proper gods were considered Egyptians. Foreigners were even permitted to marry Egyptians. Whilst we cannot conclusively ascertain whether ancient Egyptians were black or white, we cannot deny the effect their inventions have on our world today. Finally, assuming without conceding that the race of the ancient Egyptian was of grand importance to the civilization, then the odds would be in the favor of the blacks, as evidence tilts in their direction. <laughs>